Welcome back. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the semiconductor industry, more importantly, on the CHIPS Act and what are some companies that are being affected right now due to the delay that this act is seeing at the moment. So first, we're going to start off with a quick overview of what the CHIPS Act does, and then we're going to take a closer look at some companies that are being impacted due to it. If this is your first time here, make sure to hit the thumbs up, make sure to hit the subscribe button, check out the pinned comment for a lot of great links, and also make sure to check out my tech channel. So let's get started. I do want to thank the Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and make sure to check out fool.com slash Jose to get the top 10 stocks to buy right now. So pretty much the CHIP Act provides financial assistance for the construction, expansion, or modernization of a semiconductor fabrication plant in the United States. And this is very important right now due to the overall semiconductor shortage and also due to the kind of concentration of semiconductors being produced in certain parts of the world so a lot of countries are doing something very similar where they're trying to bring a lot of semiconductor kind of production back inland and also increase the overall capacity to kind of alleviate some of the shortage we're seeing for companies to be provided with financial assistance they must demonstrate that they have made commitments to workers and community investments that they have secured agreements with regional educational entities to provide workforce training and that they have an executable plan to sustain the fab after federal support ends and i do believe that's very important because the last thing you want to do is have a fab open up and when the funding slows down then the fab closes down so they have to make sure that it will be sustainable even post federal support so the chips act was first passed by the senate in the summer of 2021 and the house of representatives has appropriated about 52 billion for it in february unfortunately the two chambers have been unable to join their bills together and the act has still not passed and this is delaying a lot of money and a lot of companies are complaining about it because they were promised some money as they started their investments for example intel recently delayed their groundbreaking at their new ohio fabrication plant and they blamed the inaction by Congress. The groundbreaking event was supposed to happen July 22nd, but because the CHIP Act has not passed, they have not received funds that Intel was planning on receiving to help shore up the cost of building this new mega fab in Columbus. So you can see Intel is very pushy right now and saying, hey, if you don't give us that money soon, we won't be able to start this fabrication. And unfortunately, they're not the only ones right now. This article by Washington Post mentions that two huge chip makers warn of expansion delay and the two companies are the first one we mentioned intel the second one is global foundries a company that i actually did a video on yesterday so make sure to check that out if you want to learn more about global foundries more importantly there was an article by cnbc that says global wafers will follow through on its plan to build a silicon wafer factory in texas but only if congress passes the chip for america act by the time the august recess begins so we can see there's definitely a timeline and for those not familiar with many of these companies first let me talk about intel and global foundries both these companies are working on the manufacturing process of chip then we have the company global wafers and for those not familiar global wafers is a manufacturer of the wafers and if global wafers does create a factory in the united states this investment will represent the first new silicone wafer facility in the united states in over two decades and like i mentioned they make the wafers which is the starting material for the chip productions that all kind of fabrication plants use from tsm to intel to global foundries and much more in theory if they start building this texas facility soon it's expected to become operational in 2025 and once it achieves its nominal output it should theoretically be able to cover all of u.s demand for 300 millimeter wafers as mentioned by an article in tech spot so i do want to say the chip acts will help certain investments but i do want to say i wouldn't consider this a broken thesis kind of point for example if the chip act takes forever it's not something that would push me away from investing in semiconductor companies i do believe intel for example even though they might delay and kind of push back their fabrication uh, facility opening at the end of the day this is a company that wants to become a leader in the fab process so they're still going to continue to invest money to kind of increase their capacity and increase their overall equipment and kind of solutions for the manufacturing of chips uh, so again for a lot of these companies it would definitely help boost their revenues especially in the short term of things as they're able to open up these fabs a little bit quicker and spend a little bit less money so i hope you guys enjoyed the quick update take care have a good day and see you next time